Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Getting Started with Attributes and Vops inside of Houdini workshop series. And in this one we'll be talking about interesting ways to procedurally model or do some sort of type of effect using the scattering based on density that we actually get from attribute transfer from a random box that we move around and of course we can create some sort of random geometry and I will be showing different ways of achieving this geometry using the poly wire like this, using the poly extrude like this or doing some sort of a shattered looking geometry like that. Of course, as you might have already seen, everything remains procedural, it rebuilds itself on the fly. So a really, really interesting setup. Uh, not exactly hard to do. I'll be showing every single step of the way. And I want to say that before we begin, if you're interested in supporting the channel, please consider subscribing to the Patreon. It has all the assets and files and scene that you need to follow along. Without further ado, let's get started and create those setups. So let's start creating our setups. And as per usual, of course, we start with geometry and I'll start with a grid. Let's make it two by two and rows like 50 by 50. I think it will be more or less enough. And of course we drop the scatter. Now, the interesting part is that we can generate by density. And of course the density attribute will be density. However, you will immediately see that we have a little bit of a problem because in fact, we do not have any attribute that is, well, that is called density. So we can drop attribute paint as the name suggests, we will be painting an attribute. And of course, the attribute we're going to paint is, we'll call it density. And well, just make some amazing painting. And of course, we get back to our scatter. And as you can see, here we go, density, and it respects the density, everything looking fine and uh, pretty good. So now that we have our way of scattering, and now it you know that you can actually paint some things. You can basically, uh, by the way, go back here. You can hold down control and erase all that you had. Uh, left mouse button will be painting more. You can reset all the changes, make something like this. Again, another fantastic painting by me. So I'm going to make millions by selling my NFTs. And uh, <laughs> so what we're going to do now is actually attribute transfer. If you remember, we learned how to attribute transfer and I will be actually using that to make some sort of uh, interesting setup. And before we talk about that, I just want to show you that we can actually do the Voronoi fracture. So there we go. Uh, we can pipe the geometry that we want to fracture is here and the points, right? So let's just disable the density attributes and make some points. And uh, here we go. Interesting part here is when we are working with just flat surface and not geometry that has, you know, anything inside here. In our case, we have just a plane. And of course, we will disable the create interior surfaces. Now you'll see that we have a little bit of our, too much of a wireframe. So I can control C, control V, the grid here, make it rows two by two, and we can do uh, we can actually use different geometry to make scattering, whoops, like this. So uh, you will see that if I make the size a little bit smaller, right? So the interesting part is that this, whoops, this grid here is smaller than this grid here. And uh, if in fact we're going to scatter points on a smaller grid, the fracturing based on the scatter points uh, will not go outside of this bound. So that's that's kind of interesting already. I think it looks pretty fun as it is. You'll see that we have some sort of a, a organic kind of shattering effect. We can actually preview it using exploded view. And <laughs> the name is a little bit misleading because it doesn't explode anything. It just moves the pieces around. So in case you were wondering, what does this node do? Why nothing is exploding? Where is the fire? <laughs> It's not, it doesn't do that, right? So anyway, so let's get back to our Voronoi fracture. We can actually preview our pieces by pressing or unpressing this little toggle. But the final thing I want to do, so basically why I am uh, using the high resolution grid to scatter, because we need to attribute transfer and we'll do just that. 
Let's create, uh, I don't know, box, sphere, doesn't matter at this point. The only thing we want to do is something small that we can then transform, transform, and move around, and we have to attribute create. Uh, in this case, the attribute we're going to create is, in fact, will be density. So to make this setup work, we have to attribute create density. However, the default should be not one, it should be zero. Otherwise, everything will have the density of one. And of course, grid does not have any density whatsoever. So we do the attribute transfer and we visualize it using the attribute visualize. You can see. So if I connect it here, we can do the visualizers, not the P, but then city. And of course, you can drag and uh, drop down here. It will work just as fine. And of course, minimum is zero, maximum is one. So there you go. This will control the density. And this is just for visualization purposes, of course. The real deal happens on the actual scatter node, right? So if I re-enable the Warner fracture, you will see that indeed we can control using our box. So that looks pretty fine. Now I want to do the attribute blur the attribute blur that we will be blurring is again density blurring iteration is a little bit larger step size a little bit larger so um, we kind of have smoother let's just attribute visualize again deleted it a little bit too fast again uh, density to one here we go so um, maybe increase the blurring iterations a little bit sort of like this, right? Of course, we can increase the box itself that we transfer around, and that will control our scattering. If I make a little bit less of our points, you will see that we indeed have sort of this mosaic effect, which is pretty cool. So we can move it around, and you will see that it basically rebuilds our Boronoi fracture based on the position of our box. I think it's really cool. Of course, we can then uh, kind of like do the exported view or we can actually do the polywire. Uh, let's see what we get. Wire radius zero, zero, 001. Of course, we need to drop new normals because this looks wacky. <laughs> and uh, if we increase the divisions like this, you will see that we indeed have this interesting, really, really interesting effect. And of course, if we transform our box around, it will rebuild itself. So that looks really, really cool. Um, the other way would be to poly extrude. If you want to do it like that, we can do some sort of a distance here, output back. Um, if we do a little bit of a poly bevel, and I think we can poly bevel pretty much everything with a very small distance like this. Uh, do another division and if we subdivide it right now we'll see that we have some sort of like a pebbles again normal so it kind of looks <laughs> less wacky so we have this kind of like a again shattered it's being controlled by our transformation everything is working relatively fast especially considering that we're bebbling and subdividing it afterwards so so there you go just to summarize what we learned in this one is that we can actually do the attribute transfer and we can scatter based on some sort of attribute. In our case, it will be density. And we can fracture based on the uh, points which are controlled by the density that we transfer from another geometry. In our case, it's just a box that we move around. So it kind of rebuilds and creates uh, different solutions for our geometry fracturing. We can visualize our attribute using the attribute visualize as the name suggests. Just don't forget to actually tell what visualizing you want to do. And of course, set the minimum and maximum for your visualization. Of course, the interesting part here is that you should create the attribute before you transfer it. And don't forget the default should be zero and the value that you want to transfer should be one. Otherwise, everything will have the value of one and that's not what we want. I think the last thing I want to show you is that you can Boolean 
your flat geometry. So let's just do the Boolean like here. Uh, let's see, here is our grid, geometry A. Here is our Voronoi fracture. No, actually I want to Boolean the exploded view. It will be geometry B. So if I now Boolean it, it will look kind of nothing works. However, we can treat that as surface and we can treat that as surface as well. And if we now poly extrude that, you'll see that we indeed have this some sort of a spider web or, you know, what have you. Of course, if we do the exploded view slightly more, exploded, so to speak, you'll see that we have a little bit uh, different way. Uh, so basically, this is the polywire way of doing this. Uh, this is the poly extrude way of uh, previewing or doing our geometry. So again, do not forget if, you, if you're really booleaning the flat surfaces, treat that not as a solid, but treat that as a surface and it should work just fine. So there you go. I think it was really interesting. It was really cool. It's kind of like a interesting way of doing procedural modeling for your geometry or some sort of effects. This looks like a road to some citadel basis for your city planning or anything else. Just whatever you want really. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel, press the like button if you like what you see. If you have some ideas, suggestions, uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment. I try to read all the comments. And of course, hopefully you had fun learning new things. I hope to see you in the next video and have a good day. Bye-bye.